Okay. <laughs> so it's not formal worship service. It's informal. But remember, during the book of Acts, if we look at the book of Acts, those who came together, where did they gather? In homes. In houses, they would gather. You know, they weren't perfectly planned or announced. So the important part was the gathering for worshiping and hearing God's word and meditating on it. That was important, that our hearts would be open to listen and to receive the Holy Spirit and have him challenge us, convict us. Those are important. It's just like singing, though, and praising God is important. So me and my wife went to the mall yesterday, you know, kind of enjoyed ourselves, you know, looking around, and I was walking, and I missed being able to walk, you know, hiking. I haven't been able to do that. You know, I feel like I'm gaining a little bit of weight, <laughs> so I need to exercise, get out, walk a little bit. So we went to the mall, and sometimes my wife, you know, she would want to go look in some of the stores. And, you know, I wasn't really enthusiastic about going into the stores. You men know what I mean, right? Mm -hmm. Women like to look, and the husbands or the men are not really enthusiastic about it. And I'm one of those. So I just sat out and waited. And, you know, I took my phone out. You know, if I'd see something, looking, you know, maybe that word, I'd see on a sign, I'd look it out and look it up. But maybe there wasn't anything there, and I'd want to read something, you know, a book. I'd be looking at my phone. But now, since maybe this is the second week, I hadn't had a phone. It's been broken. So I'm hoping that this week I'll get a new phone. My wife, you know, she got a new phone recently, but I haven't yet. So hopefully mine will be coming. So, you know... Ins I found out that the insurance will pay for our phone. I didn't realize we had insurance coverage. But regardless, um, I was sitting at the ball, and I was like, I had no phone. So what was left for me to do? I prayed. I could pray. And I thought, really, prayer is more important than our phones. Truly, it is. Prayer is not... You know, when you pray in conferencer, you know, like the internet is broken or anything, we have to tell God to wait, that the power's gone out, you know, the battery's dead, you know, I can't pray. We don't, we don't, prayer is there all the time. It's not dependent on those things. So I thought it was true that we can pray about everything sitting there. It's possible. So I thought, yeah, it's true. And I remembered many years ago, a friend of mine, you know, told me, you know, while he was driving, you know, he was going to a meeting, and then we came into the meeting. But he told me at the time while we were sitting in the car, he says, what are you going to do sitting in the car while I'm inside? He goes, I'm going to pray. And it was funny, you know, when I... When my wife and was inside looking at the stores, you know, I came in and I would sit and I was kind of watching. There's many different interesting topics, you know, that was on, you know, different boxes on the shelf, you know, sayings. And I, one of them captured my eye and I thought, wow, that's perfect. It says it was about prayer and it was very interesting. I'll let you see it here. Prayer is itself is the world's greatest wireless connection. You don't have to have wires connected to do prayer. You don't have to have a phone to stay connected. You know, you don't have to have a line. You can pray to God anytime. That's the best, the greatest wireless connection to God. You'll never have a disconnection. And you'll never not be able to pray. You know, the world's greatest wireless con connection. And I agree with that and really like that quote. So prayer, it really benefits us, right? Yes, of course it does. It has such out, 
outstanding benefits. Prayer does so much for us. It is better than our phones, truly. Yes, phones are fun. You know, we enjoy playing games on them or texting, emailing. You know, some things are important that we have to do, yes. But prayer is more important than our phones. And I hope you would agree with that. So first, let's open in prayer. Father, we are grateful, Lord, for the scriptures of what we believe, our creed that is established on the scriptures. And Lord, we ask you to help me sign the Holy Spirit impressing on us and helping us to understand how important prayer is and how much important, more important it is than our phone. In Jesus' name, amen. So I'm going to sign these scripture verses. You know, there's several scriptures. It's in Ephesians chapter 6. I am not going to explain them verse by verse by verse. But I want you to see that there are many verses that I'm going to sign here. And I hope that you will see how all of them are related with prayer. So, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 17. You will realize or notice, you know, the armor, the sword that we put on. You know, before, we've done it in our Bible study on Wednesday nights, before. So, I'm going to sign these scripture verses here. And it says, a final word. Let me back up first. The final word. So the scriptures before verse 10 says that it's important relationship with our brothers and sisters in Christ. It's for encouragement, for support. That's what goes before this section. But this final word Paul wants to sh explain is that we have a connection with God. So before, you know, it was horizontal, now it's vertical. So it's teaching a final word, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies. We're not talking about those who are enemies, who are physical enemies that we see daily. We're fighting against the spiritual enemies, and prayer is important in that fight. But against evil rulers, the Satan, demons, and authorities that have the unseen world, meaning the spiritual world, and against the mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so that you will be able to defend or to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Talking about now in the world. You know, Christians are here in the world now. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth, the body armor of God's righteousness, for shoes to put on the peace that comes from the good news. That's the gospel, so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith, to stop the fiery arrows against of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So all these points, you hear them all throughout the scripture. You know, fight against you know, the physical enemies? No, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about spiritual. We're taking the sword, the word of God. Stand strong, you know, your feet of peace. 
all these things that we have are related to one thing that we must, must do. What is that one thing we must do? We must pray. So it's interesting, you know, I signed all these scriptures talking about the shield of faith, meaning God himself. It's not really, we're not talking about a physical shield, but we're talking about God and depending on God himself and his word and what he speaks. Righteousness is given to us from him. All these things, peace comes from him. It gives us peace through the gospel. Those are our shoes to spread it. All these things are his. So what do we do? We pray. Prayer, if we do not pray, if we did away with prayer, would all these things be ours? No. These things are given us to us through prayer. And we'll look in Acts. Oh, I'm sorry. In the next scripture in Ephesians, pray in the spirit, which that means phase with the pray, pray with the power of the Holy Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. So it's emphasizing prayer, that prayer is very important. That is the biggest part of our Christian life. You know, there's pastors, including myself, two things that we must focus in on. What are those two things? The first one is being prepared to teach and to preach. That's one of it. Secondly is what? Prayer. Pastors, that's our job. Our job's is to pray. Just like you, regardless of what you do as a job, whether it's at home or at school or in your place of work, prayer is important. Jonathan Edwards himself, he's a famous preacher in the 1700s, he said prayer is like a natural current, just like you breathing air. When you breathe, you don't think about it. You don't have to work and stay focused in order to breathe, do you? You have to make yourself breathe. It's, you know, you have to breathe in, breathe out. It's time I got to breathe in again. Do you do that? No, you don't think about it, right? It's just natural. Your breathing is natural. When you sleep, you don't have to wake up to take a deep breath in and breathe out all night, do you? No, it's natural. Your body just breathes. The same idea is when you are immersed in prayer every day, it will become natural as breathing air. Prayer is important. It is very important. So if it is not for prayer, how do we really believe and trust in God and that he will defend us, that he will provide for us? God will lead us. God will convict us. How do we stay consistent in all of these things, like I said in these scriptures, if we don't have prayer? Prayer is important. It is a big part of our lives. So one other thing I'd like to give you. It's true. It says God knows what we need before we ask. Right? Right? already knows. He knows before we even ask. And he himself can provide. Right? So when we pray and we ask God for different things, does God say, oh, really? I'm so troubled. Okay. I didn't know that. I'll provide you what you know. He already knows what you need. Regardless of whether you pray or not, he already knows. He knows your needs. He knows what you will ask for. He already knows these things. We agree on that, right? So now I ask you this question. If God knows what we need, why do we pray? To be able to thank God for what he's already given us. And at that time, George Washington, 
the president at the time. You know, he was in the military. He would always pray and ask God to help before he proceeded into battle. That's right. I remember that story. It's a very interesting story about George Washington. But it means this quote means, for an example, let's say Washington. You know, he prayed and asked God, please give us the courage, give us guidance to win this battle. But God already knew what he needed. Why did George Washington have to pray? He didn't have to do that, right? God would already provide him with whatever he needs. God's going to give it to you, right? He, he can, right? So why do we have to pray? That's the question, though. Why do we pray? It's interesting there's one scripture in the Old Testament. It says, God's saying this. He says, at that time, the people of Israel, they were in exile, meaning... They were sinning and rebelling against God, and God allowed for them to lose the battle. And their enemies took them captive and into their country and used them as slaves. That was punishment to the people of Israel. So this is what has happened. This is talking about Babylon. So now God has come back to the people of Israel, and they've repented. And it says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, for they are plans for good and not for disaster or horrible events. I will give you a future and a hope. And in those days when you pray, I will listen. So God had already had a plan, a good plan for the people of Israel. He already knew what their needs were. They needed a home. They needed to go back home. You know, have a bright future. God already knew that. He already had a plan for them. But in those days when you pray, I will listen. It's like God has a plan and he's holding it. You know, I have this plan. Come on, just pray. Talk to me, and I'll give you my plan. He already knew what they needed. He already had a plan. But why do we have to pray? Does it seem like it's not necessary because God can just give it to us? Right, Hillary? She threw out the answer. And I'll show you here in this next slide. So it means that we agree, yes, that we depend on him. God is not holding back. You know, I have an answer for you and I have a plan for you and he's holding it back and I'm not going to give it to you. No. Mm -mm. Wait a minute, if you ask, I'll give it to you. It's kind of like I want you to ask me. You know, makes God feel better, right? Makes him feel good that you've asked him. <laughs> You know, when he, then he gives it, does he wait? No, he doesn't. But God's not like that. He doesn't need for us to go, okay, God, I need this, this, and this. I need you. And then he'll give it. You know, I'm tempted to tell you about a Star Trek story that I've seen on TV and I don't know if I should tell you because it just came into my mind. But anyways, I'm going to put it to the side. You know, what are you talking about? You know, it's a little off. But, you know, I like the story anyways. But anyways, we'll put it to the side for now. So he wants to teach us to realize that we do depend on him. And acknowledge our own dependence and that we cannot do things on our own. Remember in John chapter 15, Jesus said, You are the branches and you can do nothing without me. It means that we are fully dependent on Him. And it's important that we're dependent on Him. And in that way, we remember and we're reminded when we pray, seriously pray, and we go to God, we acknowledge and agree that we are dependent on Him. That's what God is trying to teach us 
through prayer that we're dependent. If God just kept giving and giving and giving, and we wouldn't think nothing about it anymore. We wouldn't think about all how important. We wouldn't stop and think and be grateful to God for his blessings. You know, all these things, I would think it was me, me, me. We have to humble ourselves and remember that it comes from God. And what do we need to do? We need to pray to show from our hearts that we are dependent on him. That is where God wants us to remember and be reminded that he doesn't need you to make him feel better or feel good about himself. He doesn't need that. Remember, he's the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, the Son, and the Father. They're a perfect relationship with each other. They have the perfect relationship. They're not alone. God did not create the earth, Adam and Eve, and create all of us so that he would not be alone. That's not true. So we have scripture, yes. In Habakkuk, in the Old Testament, he himself was a king. He felt so very helpless. Himself was king, the people of Israel were looking to him from, you know, protection because these enemies were coming to them. They were so very strong. They could just plow through them and defeat them. And so he was trying to feel very helpless. So he, the enemies mocked their faith in God, you know, thinking that they had all this power. And Habakkuk felt the dependence on God and what he needed. And what he said was very beautiful. It says, I have heard all about you, Lord. I am filled with awe by your amazing works and all these things that he's done, miracles, his power revealed. And in this time of our deep need, help us again as you did in years gone by. He was asking the Lord to help. He showed his dependence on God. And God told him, wait and watch. And God worked and destroyed the enemies. What did they do? They did absolutely nothing. He believed and God destroyed. His dependence was on God. And we often need to remember that we need to depend on him. Now, the other reason we need to pray, regardless of whether God needs us to or not, but he wants us to pray, to remember that we need prayer. But why? What's our second reason? Our praise to God makes our relationship with God stronger. We become closer. When we praise God, how does that help us have a better relationship with God? How? When we praise, we remember what God has already done. And how wonderful he is. And it helps us to keep our eyes on him and to depend on him more. And we mature in our relationship with him. So prayer is very important. It helps grow our relationship because it helps us remember what God has done for us. So sometimes my wife wants me to praise her. You know, our husbands are supposed to praise their wives. So it makes them feel better. You know, cleaning the house, the husband should notice. Hey, you know, you've done all these things. Wow, thank you so much. You know, your wife feels touched. Oh, thank you for noticing. You know, you are just awesome. That's what, you know, when we tell our wives that. But understand that does that help the husband, you know, remember what she's done for me? Yeah, it helps us. And then we cherish our relationship with our spouse. Same idea, God doesn't need us to make God feel better. But when we praise and when we remember all of the things that God has done, 
we cherish him even more. We want that relationship. We want to hold tight to him. That's our strengthening relationship when we remember these things and praise him. So David, King David, wrote in Psalms, he said many things and many praises to God and accolades for the many things that he did. You know, when I have a hard time, you know, picking out which psalm, which verse, you know, and I put one example up here, but there are so many in the book of Psalms. This is David. He says, I will exalt you, elevate you, my God and King. I am praise your name forever and ever. I will praise you every day. Yes, I will praise you forever. Great is the Lord. He is the most worthy of praise. No one can measure his greatness. No one. So King David knew all the things that God had done and how awesome and wonderful and knowing that no other man could equate to God and how astonishing God was. And that helped King David remember all of the things that he had done and his relationship with God became stronger. You know, sometimes we get down. We focus on the negative things that we don't like these things in our lives and it tends to lead us to being depressed. But David would encourage himself spiritually. He would stop and he would praise God for all of these things, just continual praise to make him feel inspired, revived, and think more about the things that God had done and his relationship with God became stronger. So prayer is important. Praise is important. So the third thing is our resistance you know, our resistance to, take, to take temptation becomes stronger when we pray. Prayer makes us be able to stand stronger. It's interesting when I was looking for a prayer, you know, that was very beneficial, I found one that said, when you pray, it will help you resist temptation. God will help you. So when I was looking through this, you know where it's from? From the book of the Mormons. You know, they don't believe in Jesus. They don't believe in prayer itself. It will help <coughs> you resist temptation. Really, we need to depend on Jesus, not just our prayers to resist temptation. He is the one who gives us righteousness, and Jesus is the one who takes us to God. So we have a clear conscience, so we can come to God's presence, right? So when we depend on the Holy Spirit, He helps us, and His power is given to us, not from within ourselves to be able to resist temptation. God's helps me, it is when we need the Holy Spirit, His power helps us. So when we pray, you're focusing in on God and the Holy Spirit help. And God promised that if you trusted in God, God would provide a way of escape from temptation, and He will. But if you don't focus in on Him... And the reason why we don't focus is because we've not prayed. So Jesus knew that the disciples were getting sleepy. While Jesus was praying the night before, you know, he was crucified on the cross, he noticed that they were falling asleep and he woke them up, get up, on several occasions, but they would fall asleep. And he said what? He told them, Keep watch and pray. Keep watch. It means to be alert. Be alert for temptation. Keep watch. It doesn't mean to watch TV. 
you know, that's not what it's talking about. It's talking about being alert and pray so that you will not give into temptation. For the Spirit is willing, the, the Holy Spirit is willing, but the body, meaning the flesh, is weak. So you yourselves, can you stand strong in your own flesh and resist temptation? No, it's easy for us to fall into it. So we need the Holy Spirit's power so that we can stand strong and resist temptation. So prayer is important. So point number four. It is our right place of humility, meaning what? So when we face temptation, we can become arrogant. Me, me, me. You know, thinking that it's me. Arrogant. Not thinking about God, that he gives us skills and talents. He gives us the Holy Spirit. He gives us the grace. He gives us what we need. But we become arrogant and think of ourselves and become prideful. Why? Because we don't pray. When we pr pray, or I'm sorry, when we become arrogant and prideful, we are not really praying and we're not really depending on God. Every time we stop praying because we're focused on the me, thinking that I can, I don't need God, that is very dangerous to becoming full of pride and falling into sin when we don't think we need to depend on God. Prayer, you know, if we're honest, if you stop what you're doing and you pray really serious, then you'll realize I'm only a servant. I am not more than what I am. Jesus warns us not to elevate where we are now. So when we pray, prayer takes us back to our to being humble. And that really frees us from the pressure of what we have to worry about what the world thinks of us. If we worry about what our boss will think of us. You know, we don't have to worry about that because when we pray and ask the Lord to give us guidance, that keeps us humble and we realize that we are only servants. Just like a pastor, you know, has a wonderful personality, people like him, very friendly, but the pastor is tempted to, tempted, but they must realize that they're only a servant, but they only do that when they pray and remain humble. Jesus taught the disciples. He said the same to the disciples. It says, in the same way, talking about slaves, you know, I decide what time I want to leave. Slaves would work until their master, the person who owned the slaves, told them, you know, you can stop working. Now you can come and you must cook. Would they go ahead and eat? No. They would cook first for the master. Even though they were hungry, they would first give to him. They would cook and he would eat. And then the slaves would stand there and wait until the master, while his needs had been met, he didn't say thank you. He, I didn't thank him for all the work. They wouldn't, he wouldn't say anything. You know, and when he left, the slaves would clean up, and then they would cook for themselves. Why? Because they were slaves. Just the same way, when you obey me, you should say, we are not worthy servants who have simply done our duty. That is our attitude that we should have. It shouldn't make us feel low self-esteem, you know, not at all. We should have the right attitude 
of being a servant and depending on him, and we should be joyful to serve for God with no pressure worrying about what the world thinks. We're just doing our duty as God commanded. Our relationship remains strong and good, and we remain faithful to him. That's what's important. So God is not looking at the pastor saying, so how many people have you been bringing into church? Oh, 10,000. Wonderful. God's not watching pastors and saying, how many years have you been preaching? How many times have you preached? God looks. What's important? What is he looking at that he believes? Is that he's looking for them to be faithful. When God says to you who is faithful, you well done, good and faithful servant. Welcome to the master's joy in heaven. He's done what God's commanded. And he accepted his place as a servant. And that's what we should be in the right place and humble. So how do we can stay being humble is through prayer. And remembering what he has done. And I have to humble myself. If we do away with prayer, it's easy for us to become arrogant and very self-centered. So number five, our worship becomes more deeper in truth. So what that means is, is that when you pray, it's really part of worship. When we pray, praise, and that our worship is real worship. Why? Because it is rooted in the truth, and it is rooted in God himself. He is the truth. We need to know who he is. All of the things that are his characteristics, his attributes, we know some of the doctrine from the Bible that we learn about him, but when you pray more and you continue in prayer and you study more, when you realize that he's not answering prayers, sometimes we become more dependent on him. We trust him more because you know God better. You know his attributes. When you know him more and when you focus in on prayer and what God has promised, does he answer or when God doesn't answer, it helps, keeps us rooted in the truth and helps us study him more. So like when you meet a person who's kind of interesting, maybe a boy meets a girl, you know, he wants to know more about the girl. What does he do? He wants to talk to her, right? He wants to get to know her. He wants to conversate, maybe date. You know, getting to know him is something he enjoys. That's how you know you get to know a person, and that's how your relationship matures and grows. You know facts about that person. If you do away with conversation, how do you get to know that person? How do you know more about that person, that girl? You have to, you'll know all these things through talking. You know, oh, what are your hobbies? Oh, where are you from? You know, your family, all these different things. You get to know them more. And you appreciate them more when you talk and build that deep relationship with them. Just as we do when we pray. You know, when God answers prayer, we're excited. You know, we're enthusiastic. And when we worship, our worship becomes deeper in the truth. And we learn more about who God is. And when we pray, we want to study Him more. So it's obvious, right, that prayer deepens our relationship with God. It says, for God is spirit. So those who worship him must in spirit and in truth. The word truth means that scriptures, what God, what scripture says about God. So if you say that you're a Christian, but you don't pray, or maybe you just pray a little, something's wrong. You know, you're not continually studying about God. If you just pray a little, something's wrong. You know, like a phone, and you don't use your phone, you know, texting, you know, the internet, all these different things, you know, maybe you wouldn't know what was going on, you know, you would think it's not useful, you know, 
I just use it to play for games. That's all I use my phone for. You know? If you use it just a little, you know, it's just like prayer. You know, the more we pray, the more we realize that our lives become more like Jesus. And the deeper relationship we have with him. So prayer is very important. So I admit, as a pastor, you know, I feel that I should pray more. I need to pray more. I do. I need to be in deeper prayer with God. Praying for you, as a pastor, is our responsibility to pray. I hope as you feel the need to pray, more. So let's close in prayer. Father, we are so grateful, Lord, for your scriptures that encourage us and help us realize that prayer is very important. It helps us to grow in our relationship, and it is much of a benefit to us. We are thankful for this, these things that challenge us to really help us focus in in prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.